This lesson is going to be bonus material. And what I mean by that is it's not necessary at all to proceed with the course. So I want you to understand that if you're having issues, you can just continue running Go Run um, and running your program. So we could still do uh, Go Run and just run everything here, and we should be good to go. And our server should still start up, and we're all, you know, we can still go uh, load up everything over here, uh, refresh the page, and see what's going on. But uh, I do want to show you this because it is something that I think is going to be helpful, and that is dynamic reloading. So what dynamic reloading is, is it's a way of taking or detecting any changes that we make to our application as we're building it, and then rebuilding the server and restarting it so that we don't have to manually go here, hit Control C, and run it again every time we make a change. So right now, if I were to say change this to welcome to my great site, uh, go here and refresh, you'll see, you'll see that it still says welcome to my awesome site. And that's because the server has not restarted. So what we have to do right now is we have to manually stop it, rerun it, go back here, refresh, and it says welcome to my great site. And it's not terrible to do that, but you can tell that it might get a little bit tedious over time. So uh, it's something we want to keep in mind that maybe we don't want to do that every single time we make a change. Now, the downside to using dynamic reloading like we're going to use, and one of the reasons why I was a little bit hesitant to add it to the course, is that it can also lead to some, some confusion um, whenever you have bugs or typos in your code. For instance, um, if I were to take this line here and I were to change it to FT instead of FUMPT and save it, you'll see here that if I stop and restart my server, it's really, really obvious that something's wrong because it gives me an error message. It doesn't keep running the server. And if I reload this page, nothing happens. Like it tells me that the site can't be reached. Um, with some dynamic reloading tools, not necessarily all, but some of them, what will happen is whenever it tries to build your code, if it fails to build a new version, it'll continue running the old version. So if you looked in the terminal, you would still see something like this that says there was an error, but you would not necessarily see this failed page load. And as a result, what can happen is that you can make a change, you can go to your browser real quick, you can try to load the pages, and you'll be like, why isn't this working? Why am I not seeing my changes? When in reality, it couldn't build your new version of the code, so you're still seeing the old version. And then when you go check the logs, it can be even more confusing because visiting those pages might have filled up your terminal with messages um, and you missed that build error that was there. So if you do ever run into an issue with dynamic reloading, I strongly encourage you to stop everything. Um, stop the dynamic reloading tooling, stop it all, and then make sure you restart it and make sure everything builds correctly so that you know for sure that it's using the most recent version. <laughs> So there are two tools we're going to look at. Uh, well, I'm going to show you briefly, and then you can decide which one you want. I'm going to use one of these in particular, so I suggest you use the same one, um, but you can technically look at other ones. So the first is called mod, um, and I had the URL there. It's a Cortezi slash mod, and this one has nothing to do with Go modules, but uh, it unfortunately has a similar name. And mod is a tool that was written in Go, but technically it can be used to run any sort of program. You don't have to actually be using uh, Go programs. So you can see here, there's a Python config for it. So it's just a tool for detecting changes on the local file system and restarting code when it needs to. Air, I believe is a little bit more specific to Go uh, from what I recall. It is again written in Go, but it is more specific to actually reloading Go applications. And I don't know specifically what the setup for this is like, because it's been a long time since I've used it. Uh, but I do know that it has some colors and stuff like that, which some people like, so it might be worth checking out. So I'm going to use mod because I personally feel that this one is a pretty awesome tool all around, and it's something that we're going to get a lot of value out of, even if we start branching out to projects that use other languages, or maybe use a JavaScript front end or something like that. This can still be useful to sort of pair with everything. So for installing, I suggest you grab the install instructions directly from the mod website because they could change over time. So this is the current version. Um, so this is what I'm going to be doing. And then we need to install it. Uh, what I will say for sure here is that this could be different depending on your OS. So again, check the docs and, and see how to install it. But uh, the second thing I want to note is that I would not install this from inside of your LensLock directory. And that's because if we install it here, it's going to add something to the go.mod file, and it's going to look as like a dependency. 
But in reality, this isn't a dependency of our application. This is just a tool we're using on our local computer that we could use across a bunch of different, um, we could use it across a bunch of different programs that we're using. And technically other developers don't need it to run it. So you can put it in there if you want. It's just kind of up to you. Um, I mean, I guess there's not really anything wrong with doing it. I just don't personally feel like it needs to be there. So I'm going to CD up a directory so that there's no go.mod. Um, and then I'm going to uh, grab this command here. And then we're going to run it. No, I don't want that dollar sign at the front. And after running it, I should be able to type mod and it should give me an error message here, which means that it's actually using the mod command, but I don't have things set up for it just yet. So now I'm gonna CD back into the lens lock directory. If you don't get this error suggesting that um, you don't have a mod.config file, you might need to figure out something with your paths. So again, just hop on Slack and ask, somebody can help, I'm sure but depending on the OS, it might be a little different or how you have things set up. So now that we have a mod set up, what we're going to be doing is we're going to code a, a mod file that we can use to tell it what to run when files change and what file changes to look for. So this is gonna be mod.config. And if we were to go here, you can see they have a go.config file. Um, and this one right here, you can sort of grab and see how it's working. So let's just start with what they have. And we'll paste it in here. So what's happening with this one is anytime any Go file changes, that's what this first bit's saying. Um, then in here's the block of what to do, and it's saying run go test dermods. And dermods is just a way of saying any modified directories. Uh, it's specific to mod, but it's a way of telling it just run the test for things that have changed. So if we make some changes in some files, it'll run the relevant tests or it'll try to. So if we were to run this now, you'd see here that it tries to run tests, but we don't have any test files and we're not gonna add any throughout this course because I personally feel like you're better off learning how all the web development stuff works first and then coming back and understanding how tests can be applied. Otherwise, I just feel like it's all too much at once and it's overwhelming. So we aren't gonna be actually writing tests here, but I can leave this, this command in here just in case you wanna run some tests, but you can get rid of it if you want to. So now we want something that tells our Go code to run whenever we make changes to Go files so that it'll actually start the server. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna do star star star.go exactly like we did before, but we're also gonna tell it not to run if test.go files change. And the reason I'm doing this is if a test.go file changes, we do want it to run the tests, even though we're not adding those in this course, but we want it to run the tests, but it doesn't actually need to restart the server because changing a test doesn't actually change the binary that's created for the server. Because when we when we build our, our web server, it doesn't include these test.go files. So here we can tell it prep, uh, which is going to be sort of how it prepares for the, uh, I'm gonna get the indentation lined up. It's gonna be how it sort of prepares uh, for whatever we wanna run. So prep is kind of mod's way of saying, um, this isn't something that's gonna continue running. It's just like a command we need to run as part of this build process. So we're gonna run go build dash O lens locked. And I'm just gonna put the period there. So dash O lens locked is saying the output needs to be lens locked and dot is just where it's building. Like, so it's building this directory. And then we're gonna do daemon uh, plus sig term. And we're gonna tell it to run lens locked. So basically this is saying it's gonna run it as a daemon. Um, the sig term I believe is telling it so that it can signal termination to it and then then once it closes it can start up a new one um, so if we wanted to add things like graceful shutdown of the future it should be possible and then we're just going to run that binary that we built with the previous step so ignore these error messages i believe this is just uh vs code thinking this is a different type of config file than what it really is if i stopped everything and ran it now you will see here that it starts up my server so there's some messages telling it that things are going on, but it starts the server. And if I go here, I can reload and see welcome to my awesome site. I can also come back. I can change this and make it say great site, come back and you'll see that it now says welcome to my great site. If you look in the terminal, you'll see that some different stuff's happening. Um, it's running the go build again. It's gonna go ahead and terminate this uh, daemon and it's gonna start a new one. So that is, doing what we want it to do. And at this point, you can see that it's gonna generate some logs for us, but it should be dynamically reloading stuff for us. 
And if we were to add, say, like a typo to our code, we should see some errors here like this um, and, and see what they are. So we should be able to work with those. But you'll see here that this page is still still up. So it's still running the old binary. Um, something to keep in mind that it's not always obvious when there are bugs like that. So just definitely keep that as something you need to, on the back of your mind and stop everything if there is an issue. Because uh, you'll see here that if I actually... If I go into my terminal and I stopped everything and I tried to run it, you'll see here that it's very quickly showing me there's exit statuses and that it didn't build correctly. And if I try to load now, there was no old version for it to keep building with. So it's actually not going to um, have anything here for us. But when we have an old version for it to keep running, it does keep running it and that can be confusing. Um, lastly, it's worth noting that this is going to create a lens locked binary. So if you are using source control of any sort, like Git or something like that, you might want to add that to a file to be ignored because that's probably not something you want to check in. Um, and whether or not you want to include the uh, mod.config file in your source control, that's up to you as well. I'm going to. And you could technically make the argument that if we're including this, we should maybe add that dependency to the go.mod, but I don't like adding it because it's something that when somebody goes to build the code, they technically don't need it. And I don't see any reason to sort of force that. So I think that's everything. Uh, that should get us a, a decent starting point for dynamic reloading. And again, if you have issues, check out the Slack and ask for some help, and I'm sure somebody would be happy to help out.